Hey, Mike Page from Fargo Ray. Here's a couple questions we get a lot. Does a 500 in Alaska mean the same thing as 500 in Florida? The answer is yes. If my rating comes from playing only in a weak league, is that comparable to a rating of someone who plays in a strong league or tournaments? The answer, once again, is yes. But people have a hard time accepting this. And usually the thinking is something like, look, I'm, I'm in a league in southwest Idaho. Uh, my opponents are all pretty weak. It's a casual league. How does the system know? I win half my game, so in the, I'm in the middle of the league. But I wouldn't win half my games if I was in Massachusetts. How does the system know the difference? The answer is, even though you only play in southwest Idaho, you are far more coupled to the rest of the world than you think you are. So before describing uh, uh, or explaining these questions in a little bit more detail, I want to convince you that you are probably more coupled to others than you think you are. So what we're going to do is start out by picking an obscure first name, an, ex an obscure first name such that there's only three players with established ratings with that first name. Shelton. Not Sheldon with a D, there's more of those, but Shelton with a T. Turns out there's only three with established Fargo ratings. One is in Wisconsin, one's in Louisiana, and one's in Arizona. They have an average rating of 482, which means that overall they're, they're not far from being more or less average, average pool players. And in fact, each one of them has games only from their home state. And they might think that they're not connected to the other Sheltons. So Shelton Rogers is from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He basically only plays in Wisconsin. He may remember that he played Jason Berg, who's a North Dakotan who played a tournament in Wisconsin, and he's played Caden Hunkins, who's also from Wisconsin. What he's probably not aware of is that these two played two other players who played Shelton White, who is from Arizona, and basically plays only in Arizona. And this is not an unusual situation. Shelton F., who's from Shreveport, Louisiana, plays only people in Louisiana, but as you can see here, those people have played other players who have played Shelton Rogers, who once again plays only in Wisconsin. And the third and final Shelton matchup is Shelton F. from Louisiana being connected to Shelton White from Arizona. And again, Shelton White plays basically only people in Arizona. So let's see how this works. Here is a pecking order in southwest Idaho. Suppose that all these people play in a league division together. Maybe they play in uh, local weekly tournaments. But what we can see, they play a lot against one another. And, and we know that Bill's a fair amount better than Joe, who's a little bit better than Mary, a little bit better than Henry, who's a fair amount better than Victor, who's a fair amount better than Wiley, who's a little bit better than Ralph. And we feel fairly confident in this pecking order, uh, but we're not assigning any numbers to it at this point. And here, separately, is a different pecking order in, say, Dover, Delaware. Willie's the best player, is a little bit better than Leroy, who's a fair amount better than Alonzo, and so forth. We don't know how the Delaware people match up with the Idaho people. They could be a lot better, a lot weaker, about the same. We don't know. But individually in Dover, Delaware, we feel pretty confident in this ordering. Now, let's say in our hypothetical situation... Mary plays a lot of games against Fred, and I mean a lot of games. Let's suppose they play a race to 200, and it ends up being coming down to the wire. It's pretty much 200 to 200 after 400 games. It's pretty clear that Mary and Fred play at the same level. So look at what this allows us to do. If Mary plays even with Fred, we can put them adjacent to one another here at, at the same height. And because the individual orderings and relationship within Southwest Idaho or within Dover, Delaware, don't change, uh, it allows us to line everybody up. If Mary's even with Fred, then Henry, who's a smidge below Mary, is probably pretty even with Susan, who's a smidge below Fred. And Wiley and Ralph in Southwest Idaho are probably weaker players than anybody in Dover, Delaware. And Willie and Leroy are in, in Delaware are probably stronger than anybody in Southwest Idaho. These games between Mary and Fred are something that we would call coupling games because they they serve to couple Southwest Idaho to Dover, Delaware and show how they match up. Now, this what we've described here in this hypothetical doesn't really require massive computers in the cloud and the like. You could have taken 
league stats or something in Southwest Idaho and, and gotten that ordering, league stats in Dover, Delaware, gotten that ordering, and then recognize that Mary and Fred play at the same level and come to these same qualitative conclusions. What Fargo Ratings allows you to do is something beyond this. It's easy for us to understand that when Mary plays Fred 400 games, there's a fair amount of information about how Mary plays relative to Fred. The Fargo Raid algorithm is able to extract a similar amount of information from 400 individual players, each playing a single game against 400 opponents. The same amount of information is in there, but we can't extract it with our, with our normal intuitive reasoning. So 500 in Alaska means the same thing as 500 in Florida because this kind of coupling is going on all of the time. There are about 11,000 new games added to the system every day and a complete optimization starting from scratch occurs every day. When you have regions or leagues that, that are only weakly coupled to the rest of the world, you might see more or less what we would call tide shifts, where the entire league moves up and down a little bit as the coupling gives us more knowledge about how they play relative to everyone else.